Grande, senor. I don't know no Fared. I was just lying. I'm in a hurry. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna sit at throat. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Prone here and welcome to the latest episode of Prone's Picks. On today's episode, I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite all-time movie car chases. Now, as a huge fan of action cinema, there's nothing that I love more than a good old-fashioned car chase. It's basically a staple of a good action film, in my opinion. They add excitement, they raise the stakes, and they're just super impressive and entertaining. I've always had a, an appreciation on a technical level for them as well, whether it be with the amazing stunt work, uh, the cinematography, the sound design, or the editing. Now, as fun as it was researching the list, um, I did end up having a hell of a time, uh, given that there's so many memorable car chases to choose from. But I did end up narrowing it down to 10. So grab your scorpion jacket, buckle up, and get ready for my top 10 favorite movie car chases of all time. Coming in at number 10, we have a car chase from a film that I spoke about way back on the Walter Hill episode, the opening car chase scene from 1978's The Driver. Now this particular scene shares a common theme and that is the anti-hero outrunning the cops. Other than it being shot and edited really well with some amazing stunt work, I find Ryan O'Neill's character, the driver, to be really crafty and cunning. Not just trying to outrun the cops, but playing games with them, tricking them and ultimately making them look fairly stupid. At number 9 we have another badass car chase and another film from the 70s. The end car chase from 1975's Race with the Devil. Now, for those who haven't seen the film, two couples are being chased in a camper van by a whole bunch of redneck Satanists who are trying to kill them. There's people constantly hanging off the camper van at high speeds, exploding cars, flying off bridges, and Warren Oates and Peter Fonda going ham with a shotgun on top of a camper van. So yeah, pretty bloody awesome. Coming in at number eight, I've got a scene from a film that I saw multiple times uh, at the cinema and was absolutely obsessed with as a kid. The tow truck scene through the spillways in James Cameron's Terminator 2 Judgment Day.
God, do I miss 80s and early 90s James Cameron. He was such a visionary back then. And this scene in particular was groundbreaking on multiple levels. Man, there is so much to love about this scene. When John Connor pulls up on his dirt bike and the tow truck plunges into the spillway, the amazing wire work, Arnie riding the Harley, dropping into the spillway, and then of course the massive explosion at the end that they ride away from. Peak cinema for sure. Up next in the number seven slot, we've got another sequel. 2011's Fast Five, The Bank Vault Scene. I must admit that I am quite prone to um, somewhat more grounded car chases, hence all the 70s picks so far. But don't get me wrong, I'm still a big fan of um, switch your brain off, big budget ridiculousness, and the fast movies are basically the definition of that. The start of the heist itself is bonkers enough. Ripping a giant bank vault out of a wall with just two cars, but taking it onto the streets of Rio de Janeiro, actually Puerto Rico, and wiping out anything that gets in their past whilst being chased by a whole police force is amazing. This would have been one of the hardest chases to shoot logistically and would have cost a ton of money. At number six, I have a chase from one of my favorite Australian movies of all time, the Knight Rider chase from 1979's Mad Max. Seeing it? Got it! I think that George Miller's Ozploitation Game Changer is severely underrated. Chances are that if you were born in the 70s or 80s and grew up in Australia, then this is probably your favourite Mad Max film. The stunt work, camera work and editing are all top notch, but it's the crazy and weird characters that inhabit Miller's world that really add to the insanity of the chase. Now it's time to hit that nitro switch as we head into the home stretch. And coming in at number five, I have a chase scene from one of my favorite Quentin Tarantino films, the end car chase scene from 2007's Death Proof. No. Did you do something to me? Did you say something? Nothing. Sir, come to the party. this film is finally getting reappraised because in my opinion it's actually one of Tarantino's best and one of the main reasons that this film rules so hard is that end car chase scene. Real life stunt woman and all round lord Zoe Bell's skillful acrobatics are truly something to behold. Her lying on the bonnet of the white charger which is a nice homage to vanishing point whilst driving at high speeds is badass enough without a psychopath stuntman driver trying to run her off the road. The homages to the great car films of the 70s are on full display here, but it's Tarantino's own camera work, um, editing and sound design that make this one of the greatest cat and mouse car chases of all time. It's fitting that my number four pick comes from one of the masters of modern action cinema, and that's the BMW vs Peugeot scene from John Frankenheimer's 1998 film Ronin.
John Frankenheimer had a run during the 60s where he made six or seven stone cold classics in a row that ended up being hugely influential on the action directors that followed during the 80s and 90s. Uh, unfortunately, during that period, he, uh, Frankenheimer himself lost a bit of steam. So it was a real nice surprise when 1998's uh, Ronin came out and it ended up being a nice little action crime Euro thriller throwback with some well shot action and a terrific car chase during the middle. There's something about car chases in European cities that hit differently. And this seven minute plus car chase between two Euro cars running them up through the streets of Paris causes all sorts of mayhem. Obviously the stunt driving is top notch, but again, it's the way in which the scene is shot and edited that really makes this one stand out. Coming in at number three, I have a chase that's the epitome of the word desperation, and that's the chaotic chase through the streets of LA in 1985's To Live and Die in LA. There's one thing that car chases from this era have in common that separate them from modern ones, and that's grittiness. Legendary director William Friedkin sure knows how to capture that. Whether it be through where he places the camera or through the performances he gets during the scene. You can really feel the desperation of the two road cops, played by Prone's Picks Faves, William Peterson and Dean Stockwell, as they're chased throughout the streets of LA by their ruthless counterparts. The chase goes from the freeway to the docks, on and across the train tracks in a freight yard, through a spillway, then back onto a freeway where they proceed to drive head on into traffic. This all whilst being chased by multiple cars and constantly being shot at with automatic weapons. The logistics of this sequence alone is super impressive and Freakin and his team shoot from multiple angles using wides, amazing tracking shots and jarring close-ups, which all come together masterfully in the edit. This chase and movie in general is still pretty underrated in my opinion. So if you haven't seen it, check it out ASAP as it's definitely one of the best action crime thrillers of the 80s. Up next, we're going back to back freaking with the hectic car chase from 1971's classic, The French Connection. Just like the previous pick, this gritty sequence is all about the desperation of cop Popeye Doll, played brilliantly by Gene Hackman as he chases down an equally desperate psychopath who's hijacked a Brooklyn subway train. It starts off with Hackman's Popeye carjacking someone in the middle of the road, then dangerously driving through the streets of Brooklyn chasing a train at ridiculously high speeds. The fact that he's in a car chasing a maniac who's hijacked a train makes it different to all the other films on the list. Again, it's the way that Freakin's able to capture the grittiness and desperation that makes this one so special. He uses wonderful wide tracking shots, often with the train in the background, and then jarring close-ups to great effect. The majority of the sequence shot on the streets was done without a permit, so there's genuine reactions to the chaos unfolding. Now I know that this type of guerrilla filmmaking is dangerous, and as a budding director, it's definitely something that I wouldn't do myself. But goddamn if it doesn't add to the greatness of this scene tenfold. 
Fun fact, when Friedkin saw the dailies after the sequence was initially shot, he let the stunt driver and coordinator for the film, Bill Hickman, know that he thought it was average at best. This then prompted an angry Hickman to pick Friedkin up in the stunt car the following day. With a camera over his shoulder, they then proceeded to speed through the streets of Brooklyn at speeds of 140 kilometers per hour over 25 blocks, running through stoplights and hitting corners at ridiculous speeds. It's the look of New York in the 70s, the way it's shot and edited, the genuine reactions of people on the streets, the amazing sound design, and of course the desperation of both protagonist and antagonist that make this one of the greatest car chases of all time. Well, here we are at number one, guys, and I'm sure some of you have probably figured out what it's gonna be. It may be a cliche, but it is a lot of people's favorite car chase for a reason, and that is the Charger vs. Mustang chase from 1968's Bullet. Detective Frank Bullitt, played by the king of cool himself, Steve McQueen, chases a mob hitman through the streets of San Francisco in a green Mustang GT. <laughs> Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, it is. And on a technical and logistical level, there's probably better chases on this list. But this one is hugely influential, has terrific style, and is just so damn cool and fun. It's not only the coolness of McQueen driving such an iconic car, but it's the city of San Francisco that also adds to the greatness of the sequence. All those hills and tight corners make for a really engaging and exciting chase. Once again, legendary stunt driver and coordinator Bill Hickman is choreographing. In fact, he's actually playing the driver of the Charger that McQueen's character is pursuing. While there are some minor issues with the editing, it's still shot brilliantly, and they use the loudness of the V8 engines to great effect with the sound design. It's Hickman's brilliance, the iconic cars, the iconic city, the iconic period, and the icon himself, Steve McQueen, that make this scene my favorite movie car chase of all time. Well, there you have it folks, my top 10 favorite movie car chases of all time. I hope that I've opened your eyes to a few gems that you may not have heard of, and I hope that I haven't pissed you off too much by leaving some bangers off the list. I honestly could have put four or five different chases from Mad Max in there, but I did want to show a little bit of variety on the list. Speaking of leaving bangers off the list, here's a couple of classics that were pretty damn close, but didn't quite make the cut. Well, that's it for another episode of Prone's Picks. Thanks for sticking around for the full episode. Let me know what are some of your favorite car chases in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I hope that you have a fun movie-filled week. I'm Prone, I'll catch you next time. Peace.